Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I have a story to tell, three stories to tell about incarnations I remember, just a few of them, and, uh, and just my understanding of what I've learned or, or what's happening. And my thought is that it will, it may help other people <laughs> um, to interpret their own circumstances and to trace them back and to, to uh, um, repair the wounding of old incarnations that had, that were traumatic and that created um, like time loops in our, our etheric net that need to be untangled and straightened out so that we can be in our full glory. So, so that's my thought. And uh, here are the stories. I hope I do them justice. Um, there was a, a time, long time ago, when I was a, I was a warrior. And I had a friend who was a companion in arms. It was very, very long time ago, before the discovery of America and before the European continent became civilized and like that. It was just a long, long time ago. And so I, I was a warrior by trade. And uh, my friend and I stuck together through war. It's a very difficult experience. And, and so it's good to have a friend. <laughs> so we survived a lot of battles. And it turned out that, that my, uh, we were kind of rough hewn. You might have called us barbarians <laughs> from vantage point of current civilization. And um, my friend had a woman. And in current civilized terms, you might call her his wife. And I was not the civilized, civilized sort. And uh, one time I found, he found me with her in an extremely compromising situation. And he became enraged. And he killed me on the spot. Now the last thing I remember about that, that stabbing death is that I, I loved him so. And I hoped for his forgiveness. And that 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 anguish of that death without finding forgiveness was uh, like embedded in my in my my body at the at the site of the wound. <laughs> Terrible story. These are the kinds of stories that we remember, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're the first to come back. Not all the good stories, just the terrible stories. Because <laughs> those are the ones to do with soul wounding, right? So, so then, many lifetimes went by. And eventually I found myself in the nature spirit world. I was a nature spirit. And I had a particular deva that I was very fond of. And I used to Pal, I, you know, I was tiny. The Deva was like huge <laughs> and magnificent energy. And I used to just hang around with my Deva in total awe and adoration. And one day, I found myself near a beautiful pool of water. This was in the rustic times when people lived in small villages. I found myself as a nature spirit near a pool of water in a forest. And there were some human children playing and diving in the water. And I thought to myself, I would really like to be a human. So, before you knew it, my deva arranged it. And before I knew it, oh, right. I saw a child that I recognized there. And that was the cause of my longing. And before I knew it, I was a baby in that village. And as time went on, I, I, I who had fallen in love as a nature spirit with that young, very young child, found myself married to him. And what do you know? It was the same guy that I had sought forgiveness from so long ago. And we were deeply and passionately in love. At a young age, we were married. Before I knew it, I was with child. 
And before I, time rolled round again, I found myself giving birth. And in the process of giving birth to a beautiful baby girl, I lost my life. The last thing that I remembered was my lifeblood draining out of me over my legs and a, a terrible concern for, the, for my husband whom I loved dearly and for my child who had just been born. And as I left my body and through my astral spirit, I asked my husband if he would please take care of our child. And he agreed. Because of that terrible experience I had of love, deepest love won and suddenly lost through death, I went back to the nature realm for a while. Now, what was happening back on earth with my husband and my child? My husband went into a terrible depression. He couldn't get over my death. And after a few years, in his despondency, he, he committed suicide. And my child was left to survive on her own with the help of friends in the village. Now, so that's that story. And many years went by, many, many years went by to modern times. Modern times came. And some, oh, 15 years ago, I found myself uh, walking, walking along, and I felt a great thrilling of my soul, a great resonance with some energy nearby. And before long, I found out that it that this this resonance had to do with a man and a woman who were friends. Now what you're thinking? <laughs> so, I, I, I felt a very strong kinship with both of them on a spiritual plane. I didn't know why. I couldn't explain it. I could tell that the woman didn't like me. And I could tell that the man was afraid of me. Shortly after that, the man and the woman got married. <laughs> and so, <laughs> it took a long time listening telepathically on the, on the emotional plane and on the mental plane to finally figure out all this stuff as to what had actually happened, why, why that, that, that moment in time happened. And the closest I can tell you is this. The man was the man that I was married to. The woman was my daughter. He had decided in this lifetime to provide for her the love that he was unable to provide in that lifetime, the emotional support. He didn't want to have anything to do with me because of the pain of that separation. She didn't want to have anything to do with me because she was still feeling deserted by her mother from those ancient times. Now. Now those feelings are prenatal tendencies and, and cellular memories that are stored because of trauma. We don't have to be with the people that created the trauma to set that trauma free. In fact, if we're with those people, we're less likely to do so. Because what's set up then is kind of a an energetic action reaction and acting out of old wounds and that. So it makes it very difficult to clear ourselves. The best way to clear is to work with one's own electromagnetic field. And we've talked about that many times in the past, all the tools that are available to us and so forth. The difficult thing is to step back in neutrality and understand that it's we, ourselves, who have to do this thing. We can't do it with the help of another person. That souls ascend 
one by one, as Daniela Breen is always saying. She's a wonderful teacher. <laughs> one by one, we ascend. Our electromagnetic field can only like unfold into its true potential if we're not courted to other people. <sighs> it's a hard thing, but a true thing. And realizing it creates freedom. It just, it, just knowing it creates freedom. Before we're actually totally free, there's a great freeing of the mind and the emotions, you know? It's a crawdad. 